Proverbs chapter number 11, going to read two verses, beginning in verse number 24. Verse number 24 says, There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meet, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Now, these two verses are meant to give us a picture of a farmer. When it comes to scattering and when it comes to watering, what it's talking about is planting new crops. So in verse number 24, there is that scattereth. Now to scatter things, usually we think of that in the connotation that we're driving it away. Here what scattereth means is we're going far and wide, spreading what God has blessed us with. Okay, think of, yeah, it is very hot in here, I need one of them fans. But, anyway, verse number 24, it's talking about scattering what God has blessed you with. Okay, if you were a farmer, the reason that you have extra seed left over is because God gave you a good enough harvest that not only you ate off of it, not only that you were able to live off of the money that you traded or sold that increased for it, but you had enough that you could still go back and plant the next year. Okay, God didn't just meet your need. God gave you the provisions to meet your needs for the next year. Right? Well, when it says there is, meaning there is a person, there are people that scattereth and yet increaseth. Okay, the beautiful thing about seeds. If you have a seed... If you take care of that seed, you plant it, you water it, you're going to get more than one seed out of it. That, that's just common sense. Unless you're planting something that doesn't have seeds in it, like them little tiny little oranges that all of a sudden they've started to market to babies. What's wrong with regular oranges? That's what I was raised on, right? Why do they got to have these little itty bitty things? No seeds in it that you can peel with your finger. No, sit them down in the chair, make them wait for you to get the knife out, to cut it in half, to skin it, Right? Teach them patience. But anyway, unless you're planting something that doesn't have seeds, which begs the question, how in the world did it come about anyway? But everything God made had its seeds within it. Go read Genesis chapter number one. It was able to reproduce, to populate, to multiply. So if you've got a seed, right, so long as God blesses it to come to fruit, you're at least going to get two seeds out of it. Okay, under the way that God orchestrated everything. It had its seed within it. You're going to get more out than what you put in. Okay, well, there are those that are focused upon spreading. Okay, Farmer Maya only had half an acre worth of seeds last year, but he's going to do his best to spread it over a full acre this year or five acres by a certain point. He's saying, let's just keep growing. If God keeps giving... Let's keep putting it in the ground. Now, why does somebody go through the effort, okay, the investment? Because if you keep spreading, that means you've got to do more plowing. It means you've got to feed ox more. It means you've got to water animals more. You've got to water plants more. It means that even though you may be only adding a little bit of land, it's a whole lot of effort. But there is one that scattereth. And because he scatters, the Bible says, and yet increaseth. Now, it doesn't make sense to the carnal man, Brother Clint, that you take what you have and you go and you throw it out on the dirt where the birds can get it, where critters can come along and run up into a tree with it, right, store it away for their winter. It doesn't make sense to man, well, there's risk involved in that. Why risk it when we can just save it? Okay, you know what you make flour out of? Wheat. But you know when you make wheat into flour, you know what you're crushing? You're crushing the seeds of the wheat plant. You're crushing the thing that normally you'd go out and you would 
invest into the ground. You'd invest time and effort and hopefully prayer over it. And then you'd wait for it to be blessed of God. Well, if instead of planting it, you kept it, essentially that's your rainy day fund. That's your nest egg, as people would call it. But why would we take something that we know is here? It's real. I could touch it. Why would we take that and go bury it out in the dirt? Maybe to never see it again. Because every farmer's had a bad harvest. Every farmer's had something, maybe a natural disaster, maybe somebody being dumb and replowing what he just plowed and planted. Okay, everybody that sows has known what it is to lose. Sometimes it's a bad seed. They've been cracked before you put it in the ground, and everything that made it a seed, it wasn't a seed no more. Okay, maybe they started too early in the season, it was too cold for them seeds to germinate, and it's not going to sprout anything up out of the ground. They thought they was going to get a head start on it, but because they went out too early, it ended up costing them that whole seed pile. Right? Just like you, you know what it is to risk, to invest and to lose. Not talking about money. I'm talking about your time, your energy, right? Your mental stability. Okay, you think about some things, you're going to go nuts if you spend enough time thinking about them. Okay, you invest yourselves into others. And so often it seems like there is no fruit. And so you wonder, why are we going out and why are we scattering? Why are we putting the effort in? Why are we looking at others? Why are we scattering more than we are saving? Okay, that's the carnal man thinking. It's not the spiritual man thinking. But the carnal man says, just to put another row in is going to take, you know, that's what, originally an acre was a, enough land that a man, an ox, and then the plow that it, the ox was pulling, that's all that you could plow in a whole day. That's where the term acre comes from. Okay, later on they got more specific with it. But if you decide you're going to go do a whole other acre, that's another whole day of just plowing. While they were plowing, they weren't planting. They got to go back by hand and plant. Then you've got to develop some sort, unless you live in a very well rainy area, okay, you got to develop some sort of irrigation system, make sure that them seeds get water all the time. Okay, just like that woman from the Song of Solomon. Okay, nobody had kept her vineyard. There wasn't somebody watching the wall. There wasn't somebody making up the hitch. There wasn't somebody ensuring that things weren't getting in to spoil what had been planted. There wasn't somebody out there with a you know, shotgun with slugs in it in case deer came in and decided to eat your food. Okay, that's coming up out the ground. If you leave it untended, it's going to go to waste. Something else is going to come along and steal your harvest long before you do. So you've got to be invested in maintaining it. You've got to make sure weeds aren't in there. You see a weed, you got to go pluck it up by the root. Doesn't matter that you only see this much of it. The root could be an entire row long. You got to trace it back to the source. You got to go dig it up by the root or else it's going to keep growing. And it's going to choke out the things that you want to grow it. A lot of effort going into just planting a little bit more. Because if you expand a little bit more, that means the hedges you had last year they're not going to be good for this year because they don't cover all of what you've planted. you got to expand the hedge. means that if you're going to the other side of a hill, you may not be able to use the irrigation you used last year. That will still work for that field, but not for this field. You're not going to be able to plow it at the same time, which means you've got to invest more time. Unless you get some help or you hire somebody, even if you do that, you can't guarantee that they're going to do it the way that you expect them to do it or that you would do it. So you've got to invest the time to go investigate. Make sure that everything they did was up to your standard. What are we talking about? But There's a lot invested just doing a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Not asking you to do a whole lot more. It just says scattereth. 
You know, it's scatter me wherever you can go. He's saying, I'll take the seed wherever I can get it in the ground. Does he own all that ground? Doesn't say that. Does he have a right to go to it? Doesn't say that. It's saying that there's somebody that God's given a blessing to, and there's two types of people. One takes that blessing and they go and reinvest it. Okay, now I don't believe that they're dumb. I believe that they've got a nest egg worth of seed that if things get bad, they'd still be able to eat or they'd still be able to plant. Okay, but then there's the one that verse number 24 talks about that withholdeth more than is meat. You know what you withhold from what you take to the market? What you need. If you go to the market and you find out that there was somebody willing to buy a whole lot more than you had, you'd wish you brought more. If you go to trade and the guy said, you know what? I was willing to give you a whole lot more if you had more to give me. But since you've only got that, I can only give you this. Right? You'd be wishing that you'd brought everything that you had with you. Now see, sometimes people are expecting... Right? I don't take my checkbook down to Brother Clint might, but I don't take my check down to the car lot and say, hey, I want to buy one of those with one of these. Check ain't going to be good. I can put whatever number I want to on it. They ain't going to be able to cash it. Okay? But if I do go down to the car lot and I'm expecting it, I've already talked to my bank that I've used for all my car loans, and they say, all right, you can spend up to this amount of money and still be within the payment range that you won't be making each month. All righty, got it. Right? I prepare ahead of time. It's those moments that you aren't prepared when you weren't expecting it. Well, what happens? Well, for the man that scattereth, when things come along that he needs more increase, more gain, He's already covered. You say, why do you say that, Brother Jordan? Because I believe he's withholding what's meat or what's proper, what's good. He's withholding that bit. That's for him and his family. That's in case a rainy day comes along. But everything else is up for grabs. But what's he been doing every season? Well, if he's been scattering this season, he's probably scattering last season. And the season before that. And the season before that. Because somebody taught him, the more you plant, the better chance you got of having more at the end of the year than you did at the start. I'm not saying that, you know, he's a multi-mega seedling there. I don't know what... Not millionaire. He's got a whole lot of seed. He don't have a whole lot of money. He's a seedling there. Anyway. Right. Might be the seed king of the, you know the west right? Job was the greatest man in the east maybe this guy's got the most seeds in the west I don't know but what I do know is even though he has he may have more than anybody else he's still scattering even though he's got the most because he understands that the more you scatter the more that you will get increase didn't say that you'd get everything you wanted didn't say that you'd get the amount that you thought that you would get out of the ground. But there is one that's scattered and there is increase. Remember when I said if you put one in the ground, if it's a repopulating plant, you're at least going to get two seeds out of it. But how'd that happen? Well, because the seed was meant to make the plant. The plant was made to make more seeds. Even if you only got one seed out of it, you didn't lose anything. You didn't gain anything, but you didn't lose anything. But two, you've doubled your investment. Well, the one that keeps more than his meat withholds. What happens to that person? They put the same amount in the ground every year. Their investment stays the same. You could say that they were consistent. You could say that they were faithful. You could say that they were unwavering, that they were planted by the waters, 
They shall not be moved more than what they did last year. But they have a routine. They're not going to go out and put one more drop of water on it than they did last year. They're not going to go out and pull more weeds than they did last year because why should I have to do that this year if I didn't have to do it last year? Everything that I got on top of what I put in the ground last year, that's for us. We're going to keep it. But what's the seed doing you any good in the closet? They don't need the seed that's in the closet. They already put the seed in the ground. They're going to get the same amount that they did out of the ground last year. Until what? Until they don't. Something comes along that they weren't expecting. And then all of a sudden, the seed that went into the ground, it's no good anymore. You can overwater a plant. You can over sunlight a plant. You can also do the opposite of both of those. You can not get it enough sunlight. You can not get it enough water. You could have something out of your control. Many times throughout history, armies would come through and they'd conquer a kingdom and on the way out, they'd walk through the farmlands and they would salt the ground. What salt do to plants? It kills them. Even though all the nutrients are still in the ground that the plants need, in order to get the nutrients, they got to suck up salt and it makes it infertile. I, I mean, some, sometimes they did it so good that you can still go there to this day and the grass don't grow. Well, sometimes it's not because somebody else did it. Sometimes it's because you did it. Okay, there is a principle in farming called crop rotation. You are meant to farm with plants that both take this thing called nitrate out of the ground and then plants that put nitrate back into the ground. You want to know why some people's yards have no grass right under their trees? It's not because the grass isn't getting enough sunlight. If you can stand under the tree and still see, that means the light's getting under the tree. Okay, it's not because the grass, oh, it's too close underneath to the, nope, that's not why. It's because the big tree's sucking all the nutrients out of the ground and there's not enough left for the little grass. Okay, well you say, I don't like all these dead spots in my yard. Well, either kill the tree or find a way to make the ground more fertile. Well, what can you do? Well, you could scrape off all the old dirt, then bring in new topsoil. That'll help the things on the top grow because the big things, they aren't growing off of the top layer of dirt. It's got its roots way down in there to get water and everything else. Okay, well, what's the next option? Well, you could relocate a tree. Now, it's harder to do the bigger the tree gets, but you can. They've got big old machines that'll come in, and they'll scoop that sucker out, cut all the roots in one go, pick it up, load it onto the back of a semi, and then you can take the tree off somewhere else so that you can start farming in that spot. Okay, sometimes people get so obsessed with what they consider the big blessings in their life, that they're killing any new growth in their life. Because everything that they put in the ground is being choked out by what they're really giving all their time, attention, and energy towards. Okay, one plant gets too big. Oh, well, that's a pretty plant. I want to leave that plant there. Well, that plant's going to start choking out other things that you try to plant in the ground. But see, crop rotation. That's not just... Plants taking nitrates out, that's putting nitrates back in. If you take the big tree out of the way, well, it stops sucking up all the nitrate, but there's still only so much juice, so to speak, in the dirt. Dirt is not a magical thing where it can you magically put a seed in and then magically the plant comes out. Right? God knew more than that. He knew that plants take something out of the dirt. Well, they also put things back into the dirt. But a lot of the things that go back into the dirt, you can't grow plants with. Okay, you've got to do things. Like you, you know why golf courses every now and then? You go and look at them and they got this machine out there and it looks like it's just ripping up pellets of dirt out of the ground. It's called aeration. 
Why? They're trying to get more oxygen, nitrates, and all the gases into the dirt. Well, in order to do that, you've got to tear out a whole lot of grass. It's a golf course. So they've got plenty of it. It's okay. Okay, but crop rotation. Also, anybody ever remember hearing about George Washington Carver? George Washington Carver, the peanut man. Okay. George Washington Carver was really more than the peanut man. He was the legume man. L-E-G-U-M-E. Legumes like soy, another one. Okay, peanuts. There's a whole bunch of plants that for some reason or another God made them to do what? Put nitrate back into the ground. It's taken a little bit, but it's turning a little bit into more. Why? Because God designed it to do that way. I don't know. I'm not a chemist, not a biologist. Okay? But it takes what you give it and it turns it into more. Well, if you just grow, let's say corn, if all you're doing is growing corn, all that corn's doing is sucking the nitrate out. Well, there's nitrate in the ground. Right? Just like you've got gas in your gas tank. But once the nitrate's gone, it don't matter how much you crank the engine. It ain't going to start. Doesn't matter how hard you push it. It's not going to start. So they rotate the crops. We'll grow, we'll grow corn on this side of the field this year, and then we'll grow soybeans on this side of the field. Then next year, we're going to flip. Okay, year after that, we may turn it this way. Right? Always rotate neither what you grow or where you grow it so that the soil stays in the same state. That was one of the things that St. Lucia was real concerned about. Well, if we let you guys start growing you know, plants or farms or you start doing that, the reason that you want to grow is because we've got this rich volcanic soil. But how are you going to make sure that it stays that way so that you can keep growing? Because St. Lucia in the past, farmers would come in, they'd plant all the bananas they could till the ground would stop growing bananas. And then they'd leave. But that and soil no good. Nobody can use it. It's what caused the American Dust Bowl was unsustainable growth in farming. They were using the dirt until the dirt turned into dust and nobody could grow on it. But see, if all you've done is grow what you needed last year or you needed yesterday, doesn't take much to upset that fine balance that you've tried to find in your life. Now, why do you want to only do this much effort? Because there's other things that you also want to do. You're trying to find a balance between what you have to do and what you want to do. What the problem is, is when you narrow it down to this is what I have to do, the moment that something in life catches you off guard, now you're behind the eight ball. You don't have time to go back and rewind to plant more. Now you've got to deal with, well, in order to make the same amount of money that we did last year, I'm going to have to sell more and keep less. Well, what's that mean? Well, you know if you sell more and you keep less, that you're going to have hungry kids crying in here. You know, if you sell more and you keep less, you're not going to be able to play in as much next year. You know, if you sell more and keep less, that you may have to not just go and plant what you have, but you might have to put more effort in and get a thing called a second job next year. If you've got to sell more and keep less, you might have to choose which animals you're going to have to kill because you don't have enough left over in order to feed all of them. You say, Brother Jordan, that's harsh. Life is harsh. Sure. But Solomon figured out that those that instead of resting upon their laurels, laurels go and invest what God has blessed them with. They still keep what is meat. They're not dumb. They're not idiots. They say, Lord, thank you for blessing us. And I don't want to be frivolous with what you've blessed us. I want to make sure that if you see fit to let me go through a storm, we've got enough on the boat to make it through the storm. But also, I believe you blessed me to go out and to 
sow more so that eventually we may reap more cycle Lord you blessed me with more this year than you did last year maybe it's because you know that this year I need to plant more in order to get the same thing that I got last year you say well there's no gain there no but he sustained you go see brother Cody's orange message from the other night well how did he sustain you he gave you more one year so that you could get the same the next God's eyes he knows what he's doing we don't understand well I've got all this extra we can go out and we can do all this well how about you just go do what you can do and let God take the roots of it doesn't it make sense that if God gave you more it's because he wanted you to have more because he knew that you needed more but if you needed more you better go put it in the ground not put it in the shelf on the closet well verse number 25 the liberal soul shall be made fat that don't make sense either to the carnal man and he that watereth shall be watered also himself now see here the liberal it's not talking about the way that Americans nowadays use liberal and conservative okay in this context liberal means someone that is giving they don't have reservations about going out and investing giving they're the person that scatters. Okay? Nowadays, a liberal is the person that will take what you have and give it away to somebody else. That's not what it means here. Okay? Here, a liberal means you are giving of yourself. You're giving of your things. You're willing to go out and invest to give because you know that it's right. You know that God gave to you so that you could go and give. Give more seed to the ground, give more seed to people, give more seed to whoever it is that needs it, but you're not hoarding it. Liberal person in a hoarder. Okay, so it says there's also verse number five. He that watereth shall be watered also himself. Well, if you're pouring out all the water you got, doesn't make much sense that you're going to end up with water at the end of that equation. But see, if you give, God will make sure that somebody comes along to give you what you need. Even if there's no person, right when you're about ready to run out of water, start listening, because i got a feeling you're going to hear a thunder crack. Why? Because if you water, God will make sure that you stay watered. If you go out and you plant, even though you've planted more than you did last year, God's going to make sure that there's a reaping to come for the planting or the sowing. Now, you may have put more seed in the ground, but maybe that's because God knew that more of the seeds were going to be taken out of the equation this year, so you were going to need that in order to live off of. Maybe next year you don't. Maybe next year, bad weather is going to keep you from maybe doing one or two harvest throughout the growing season. Instead, you're only going to have enough for one. So God knows you need to put a whole lot more seed in the ground because you're only going to get one shot at it. What are you saying, Brother Dor I'm saying that the people in these verses are those that live by faith and those that live by sight. There are those that live by what thus saith the Lord, then there are those that live by what they think, or what they can reason, what they can understand. And in context, we're talking about safe folk in these verses. We're not teaching on the world today, we're teaching on God's people. There are people that come to church every week, and they do that because that's part of what they need to do that week. They know they need to go put them seeds in the ground. There are some people that will read their Bible so much throughout the week, but they won't do a, one more seed than what they did last week. Because they won't be able to do that and still get everything done that they want to get done throughout the week. They're willing to put this much seed in the ground, but they're keeping the rest of it in the closet. There are people that, well, if a revival comes along, I'll be able to go this night, this night, but not that night. Why? Why? Unless it was brought about by providence, meaning that God allowed you or kept you from coming to church that night. Then if there's a different reason other than being providentially hindered, that you say, I can't go that night, 
That means you've got seed in the closet. More than is meat. You've got seed that could be invested, but you don't want to put it in the dirt. You know a real easy way to run out of seed? Start turning it all into biscuits. If you like to taste the biscuits so much that you're willing to stop putting it in the ground so that you can have one more biscuit, right, or you can have one more fruit snack on an orange, Because you wanted to make, maybe been a noble intent, maybe you wanted to make a cake for somebody else. Well, maybe instead of making the cake, if you'd put it in the ground, you'd have enough to make the cake for everybody that you knew the next year. But no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep that. Why? What's the difference between the two? Well, one just believes. That because it happened that way yesterday, that's the way it's going to happen today. Show me chapter and verse on that. No man knoweth what a day brings forth. But we often forget the verse that having food and raiment to be content therewith. God may come along tomorrow and all them seeds that you thought were in the closet, you're going to find out they disappeared long ago. But what if... I'm not saying that it will be. I am not a prophet. Let me go on record and say that. I am not a prophet, so if this happens to you this week, I am sorry, but I did not do it. But what if God decides to take the house? What if God decides to take the car? What if God decides to take your ability to walk around? But that upset a whole lot of people's apple carts. But those that have scattered understand I'm thankful for what I had but that was God's just as much as everything else is God's. If he took it, he took it. But see, God also gave me and I got a whole lot out there in the ground that you can't see that eventually God's going to let it come up out of the ground. And it may take us a while. We're going to have to go buy new equipment. We're going to have to go get new animals. We may have to plow it by hand next year. But God's already given us enough in the ground to take care of us tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and the tomorrow after that. What they are anchored in is not what they have above the ground. It's what they have in the ground. Why? Because as long as it's in the ground, God can still use it. Anything above the dirt, God can't use that to grow. God can't use that to give increase to you a seed above ground is only going to stay a seed unless you turn that seed into something else like flour or any a whole bunch of other the people that wear seeds as necklaces I'm like why mustard seed's real easy to lose above ground Jesus told him if he had faith the size of a grain of mustard seed that you'd be able to say to the mountain be removed to the sea and it'd be done you ever seen a mustard seed? You almost need a magnifying glass to see it. It's real easy to lose one above the ground. It's real hard to lose a mustard seed in the ground. Why? Because it's coming up as a tree. It's coming up a whole lot bigger than what you put down into it. Right? Everything below the ground, that's God's business. The seeds that you put in, that's your faith. Because you're saying, Lord, this is out of my hand. I can water, I can put it, as, I can bring mirrors out and make sure that that spot of grass always had sun shining on it 24 7. Even in darkness, I'm going to get a flashlight out and point it at the mirror so that it can grow in the dark. But if God don't want that plant to come up out the ground, it ain't coming up out the ground. Doesn't matter how much you do. Everything below the dirt, that's in God's hands. And then everything that comes up out of the ground is in God's hands. Just because the stalk comes up out of the ground doesn't mean that you're going to get corn off of it. There are these sneaky things called deers. Or deer, if you want to be correct. There are deer. And some of those deer 
decide that they want to eat the apples off of your tree. Right? Some squirrels decide they want your chestnuts or acorns and they're going to rip them off of the tree. Until it falls off the tree or until you go out and harvest it, it don't belong to you. Even then, once you have it in your hand, it still belongs to God. The difference is one person says, Lord, thank you for letting me live off of this for the time being. Because the plants are still his. Seeds are still his. The place that you live in still is. The trees that you cut down in order to make the place that you live are still his. But he's just letting you use it for a while. Why? To meet your needs. Right? The oil that he put in the ground at the beginning is still the oil that you're running your car off of today. He still owns it. By him and through him do all things consist, the Bible says. Without him, you wouldn't have none of it. Okay, well, the person that takes what they have and they keep more than his meat. Because it is meat to understand that there is going to come a day where there's going to be hardship. But I hate if that hurt, burst your bubble today, but everybody going to have a bad day that they weren't expecting. And it is not meat to think that what you got today or what you had yesterday is going to get you through a day that you know is harder than any other day you faced. That's not me. That would inquire, or that would require to you to be God, because only God can take what He had yesterday and handle everything that today brings forth. Right? He's the one that made everything. He's the one that controls everything. He's the one that feeds all the sparrows when they get hungry, and still has time to care about you. Right? Well. If you keep more than what is meat, what you're saying is I can make one plus one equal three. Because you're still the same you, and if you don't put them seeds in the ground, you're saying I'm still stuck with what I had yesterday. That's still one. What I had yesterday plus me yesterday was enough to take care of yesterday. But me plus what I had yesterday is going to be enough to take on something I've never seen before. That's tempting God. Saying, Lord, I don't care what you send my way tomorrow, I'll be able to take care of it with what you gave me today. Are you so certain about that? Because God said to go out and bear much fruit. He said some would bring forth 10, 100, a whole bunch in between. That's up to God. We already said, if you put one in the ground and two come out, you already got twice as much as what you started with. And as long as you take care of what came out of the ground, it's going to have more seeds next year and the year after that. It's what we like to call compounding interest. It's a beautiful thing. It will continue to multiply so long as you take care of it. So then the next year, you may start it with one seed, but a year two, you don't just have two plants. You'd have the one you had from the first year plus the two that you put in the ground that year. You're already up to three. You say, well, I thought I doubled it. You did, and you put both in the ground. You doubled what you had, but really you get what you had plus what God blessed you with. Okay, well. When you say, Lord, this will be enough. All that seed you gave me, we're going to invest that in going out and selling it to get gain so that we can do this, that, or the other with it. No man knows what the day brings, what thou should say, if the Lord willeth, tomorrow we'll go down to such a city and sell, buy, sell, and make gain. Right, what is the will of the Lord in your life? You know what's meat? To keep back what God tells you to keep back. You know what's meat to put in the ground? Whatever God tells you to put in the ground. That may change daily. He may want you to do more planting today because he knows that tomorrow you're going to need to reap a little bit more. Amen. Tomorrow he may say, you know what, today's the day that you can sit down and rest, take a load off. But today you're going to live off of, one, the grace of God and the mercy of God, 
but two, the efforts that you put in yesterday and being rewarded for them. Or maybe ten days ago, or however long ago it was, I told you to work that hard on that day because I knew you'd need to rest on this day. The reason that the person in the front, in the front of the comparison, the one that scattereth, the one that's liberal, he doesn't think of it as his own, he thinks of it as God's. Why does he spread it? Because that's what God wants seeds to do. Why does he keep it? Because God wanted that seed to meet that need for him. No more, no less. But see, discernment, which we hear about a lot, we've thought on it a lot. The reason that the person that scatters and the person that's liberal with what God has blessed them with continue to gain, even though it looks like they're giving so much away, is because the person that is giving the gain is the one that's telling them where to go spread. If you took a map of Kentucky and said, I want to plant here, 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 just at random, some of them are going to be bust, and some of them are going to be the mother load. But see, if you try to guess every year, eventually you're going to strike out. The odds are not in your favor. The house always wins. You may pick the most fertile field in all the bluegrass, but the animals know that there's a lot of things that grow there. More animals means you're going to lose more to critters. And if they're really smart, they're going to rob you blind. Because where do critters live? Places that people don't. That means in order to get there, long before you get there, you've been robbed. But there are some animals that will go and dig the seeds out of the ground that you just put in the ground because they're hungry now and they don't want to wait for it to grow. What are you saying, Brother Jordan? The person that's liberal and that scatters it knows that some of it's going to come to naught. In the parable of the sower, the sower knew that some was going to land on good ground. Some of it was going to land on stony ground. Some of it was going to land on thorny ground. Some of it was going to be taken away by the birds. He knew all that ahead of time, but yet he still went out and he was sowing. The sower knows that some seed isn't going to turn into more seed. But he knows that the seeds that do find root, they far outweigh the losses encountered by the sowing. You got to scatter much in order to grow a little. But how much help did you get this past week? But if you're here every night, you got a whole lot of help. You know how to get more help for tomorrow? You got to spread what God gave you this week, and you got to scatter it. You got to invest it in other people. You got to invest it in your life. You got to put the effort in to take what God gave you and put it back in the ground. But, but Jordan, that don't make sense. I know it doesn't make sense. Because if you put it in the ground, you just can't go pull it up out of the ground and get it whenever you want. you got to wait for it to mature. you got to wait for the investment to come full circle. Well, what's that mean? Today, you're going to have to live on faith. Tomorrow, you're going to have to live on faith. The day after that, you're going to have to live on faith. You could say, we had a great revival and then just close this for a few days. But then when you need to go back to it, you're going to find all the stuff that you thought you had in the closet is long gone. You ate that a long time ago. And you may have missed planting season. That's why we preach and teach. But Dean mentioned it the other night. Who do you witness to? Who God tells you to witness to. Planting season may be closed by the time you get back around to it. They may not be willing to listen. The one that God wanted you to be a blessing towards, maybe he had to send somebody else to fill the need and you got robbed of being used as a blessing of God. You didn't get robbed of being used as a blessing. You chose not to be used of God. How do you take what God did for you this week and allow God to give you more off the top? You got to go scatter. You got to be willing to look at people and say they need it more than I need it and liberally give to them. You know that same word, liberal, was used when Solomon said, if any man like wisdom, let him ask of the Lord, who give to all men liberally. 
What's that mean? He gives you a press down, shake and bubbling over more than you can handle. But when you encounter somebody that has a need in the world, how does God expect you to be good to them? Give them everything that you can. Press down, shake and bubbling over. If that's what you've got, give it to them. If you've got enough just to give them a, a meal, give them the best meal that you can give them. Don't be stingy. Don't withhold more than is meat. Give them what you got. Why? Because if you give out, God's going to send somebody by that if you're watering others, you're going to be watered. Amen. May not be someone that comes by to meet your needs. God, like I said, you may pour out all the water you've got in your water pot, but who knows, God may let you dig a well the next day and you've got more water than you think or know what to do with. Right? They may find a well on your, or God may just send a thundercloud your way. Why? Well, why did God rob me of the sunshine? Because God knew you needed water. You can't have water and sunshine at the same time. Pick one. You won't be thirsty or sunburnt. Because if you get sunburnt, you're going to be more thirsty than you were before you were thirsty. That the investment is by truth, living by faith. Lord, I'm going to take what you tell me to keep. But anything more than that, we're going to spread it. We're going to give it. We're going to invest it in others. We're going to invest it in the church. We're going to take what you gave us and we're going to give it away even though the world says that we should take it and we should build with it. We should go out and we should invest. We should labor and turn that into even you know, more physical things. No, we're going to take it and we're going to give it to the immaterial, to the spiritual. We're going to lay up our treasures in heaven. You say, that doesn't make sense, Brother Jordan to the carnal man but the spiritual man understands that if you're faithful God will be faithful towards you and that's all that you really need did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on daily devotions to sign up today and as always thanks for listening